You are entering your last year of your PhD. You have worked hard on your research for years, and now you're preparing to write your dissertation, defend it, and get a job. Except, if you make the wrong move right now, it could end your entire academic career before it is even started. After my PhD, I landed two postdoctoral positions in completely different fields than what I got my PhD studying. As a professor of mathematics, I have also helped my PhD graduates find postdoctoral positions that they found fulfilling. So there are several different kinds of postdoctoral positions out there. Some are department controlled and some are determined by an individual PI. Department control positions are often called visiting assistant professor positions and require teaching as part of the position. The teaching requirement ranges from one class to three classes a semester. Assistant Professor hiring committees are often concerned with whether or not you'll be able to teach their classes. So having some evidence can be good. Just don't select a position where teaching will be overwhelming. And that can happen really fast. In this sort of position, you'll often have to find someone to collaborate with within the department. You should reach out to several faculty members at the time you're actually applying to increase your chances at an interview and also to vet potential collaborators. Now, this is the most vanilla postdoctoral positions in mathematics. It can work out, but there are better ways to set yourself up for a postdoc. I'll tell you about that in a second. But to see why they are better, we need to know what a postdoctoral position is for and how to find an effective one. So why a postdoc? Many people see postdocing as a purgatory for those that didn't land a tenure track position. This is very much the wrong way to see it. Tenure track assistant professor positions require a lot of skills that many PhDs don't learn during their time as a student. This can include the ideation of a research program, not only what individual papers would be, but an overarching objective that will naturally spawn more papers. And networking is a big part of it too. There really isn't time for someone to get to know you or your work while you're a PhD student. But as a postdoc, you'll get more time to tell people about what you have done and make essential connections that can lead to more opportunities. Grant writing is also something that off someone often picks up when they are doing a postdoc. It, this is because a lot of postdocs are funded by soft money. Money doesn't come from the university, but rather from institutions like the NIH or NSF. Of course, learning how to get external funding is non-trivial, and we'll talk about that in the future. Uh, subscribe if you want to hear about it. Now, how can you get a position like this? Here are three more ways to get a postdoctoral position. One, you can make your own position. This is sort of person that is called self-funded. Uh, the NSF actually has several different postdoctoral grants made for recent graduates. Uh, one example is a mathematical sciences postdoctoral research fellowship. These are restricted to U.S. citizens and permanent residents, but if you can find a PIA to write a proposal with you, then you'll be funded for three years to do the research. There are programs like this at the NSF for more than just mathematics, but also for physics, psychology, and, well, other disciplines. The proposals for this program tend to be pretty short, about five pages as compared to the 15-page project descriptions in a typical NSF proposal. Other places to check for this would be the NIH uh, and their K Awards program, and the intelligence community also has a mechanism for, like this. The next two kinds of postdocs are research-only laboratory postdocs and postdocs under a specific PI. Lab postdocs generally happen within a dedicated institute that has a, some singular mission. Affiliated with my university is the Moffitt Cancer Research Center, and there are national laboratories such as Los Alamos National Laboratory, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Sandia, etc. These postdocs pay quite a bit more than department postdoctoral positions, sometimes twice as much. And this is because these facilities are directed towards some major goal. It could be curing cancer, nuclear energy, you know, anything like that. Uh, these labs exist simply because there is a lot of money directed in this specific target, and so the pay there is higher. There is also a decent chance of conversion from a postdoc to a permanent position, which is not available in academia. These postdoctoral positions can be hard to get, but the best way to approach it is to seek out internships while you're still working through a PhD program. That way the lab gets to know you and you get to make impressions on those people who will be able to make a hiring decision for your postdoctoral position when it comes up. Now, the last kind of postdoctoral position I wanna to talk to you about is an individual lab postdoc. This means a lab where there is a single PI running a lab inside of a department within a university. These are the source of postdoctoral positions that I got, and this was after I was rejected from pretty much every other position I applied to. There's actually a story here that I can tell you about, but ultimately when I graduated, I didn't have a single job lined up. What I knew is that I worked within a niche in functional analysis that was closely connected to, say, H-infinity or robust control theory. I wanted to be more competitive on the job market, so I figured I needed to know more about control theory so I can pitch my pure mathematical ideas towards applications. 
I emailed everyone I could find at my university who was a control theorist to determine what I needed to learn to make myself an effective mathematician. I got one bite and I knocked on this professor's door. Turned out he didn't need me for robust control at all. I mean, they're pretty good with their control theory. Uh, I mean, they are control theorists. But his competitors were using reproducing kernel Hilbert spaces. And those four words were in the title of my dissertation. He offered me a postdoctoral position within 15 minutes of meeting me. Lab postdoctoral positions within the university don't pay as well as national laboratory, but they do tend to pay better than a visiting assistant professor position. You are looking at something between, say, 45K and 70K for these postdocs. There will always be out outliers in either direction, of course. However, I would say that these are often the positions where you get the most intensive proposal writing training. If you can succeed in these positions, then you have a pretty good chance at succeeding as an academic. The funding for these positions comes from federal agencies like NSF or DOD or NIH or something else like that. And so they are soft money funded. So if you want to extend them, you'll have to write some proposals and bring in money for yourself. Now, these positions can also come from an assistant professor startup package. The startup package is something that an assistant professor gets when they first join a, a university. If you want a position like this, then you'll need to do a lot of networking. These positions are often not posted until there's already a candidate in mind. So you'll have to send out a lot of cold emails, meet professors at conferences, and will knock on a lot of doors. If you are seeing positions like this posted online, especially if the qualifications seem oddly specific, then it's likely this position was posted to meet some legal requirements. They have someone in mind, but they're required to interview three or four people for the position. You might still be able to get the position if the preferred candidate changes their mind, but it's unlikely. You want to be the position that they're making the position for, which is what all the networking and socializing is about, which, you know, academics aren't necessarily the best at. So that's how the U.S. postdoctoral market works. And if you are wanting to land a position coming out of your PhD program, then you should start now, a year ahead of the position. Network, send cold emails, introduce yourself to people, find internships. The individuals that you reach out to might not actually have a position for you, but they could know somebody that does. Of course, you want to have your research statement and your CV ready to go. And you can watch this video here if you want to figure out how to do that. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. And I hope you have a great day.